We're talking about more reds. Hello everyone, I'm Elisa of Elisa Laporte Art, and today we are going to talk about reds again. If you haven't seen it yet, I talked in detail about all the reds I own in this video, and I will link it in the description below. When making that video, I realized I was lacking in warm reds. So I asked for your help and I received many responses to which reds I should add to my palette. Thank you all so much for your help. I was making a big Blick haul, which I will also link below, and decided on three new reds, since there were other colors I wanted as well. Let's go over the three reds I chose. I'm going to start with Harrow Red, since this is the color I was told about the most and received the most advice on. Harrow Red is a Series 3 with a light fastness of 1, and it has a pigment of PR254. It is semi-transparent, medium staining, and non-granulating. It is known as a fire engine red and cleaner than cadmium and permanent reds. Wow. So bright and vibrant. Look at that. Definitely is a very warm red. When I'm done, I'm going to actually, I'm going to compare these to the reds that I did last time. Look how beautiful that is. Moving to our Deep Scarlet. This one is a Series 1 and a Light Fastness of 1, and it is Pigment PR175. Look how deep that is. It is semi-transparent, medium staining, and non-granulating. Deep Scarlet has an earthy undertone, which gives it a natural look. Wow. Look at that. I think I have a new favorite red. Oh, those are both beautiful. This is a pigment I've seen Alvaro Castagna use many times in his beautiful paintings with a dark, gritty city scene and a splash of deep scarlet. Last up, we have our Mayan Orange, which is a Series 3 and has a light fastness of 2. And the pigment actually says Hybrid Inorganic Organic Pigment or P-O-N-A. That's a new one. Mayan orange is really more of an intense red orange. It is semi-transparent, low staining, and non-granulating. This pigment is named after the Mayan people who used it to adorn their murals. Daniel Smith uses a formula based on Mayan chemistry, but have made it metal-free and eco-friendly. Now, like in my first red video, we are going to test it with our other primaries and with its complement. We will be using ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow light, and sap green like I did in my first red video, just to keep everything the same. Have our mixing tray here, our ultramarine blue, cad yellow light, and sap green. I'm putting a little on each side so we know which one we're mixing it with for future reference. Just know that you can mix these colors with any green, blue, or yellow. It will change the colors depending on the blues, yellows, and greens that you do use, but I'm using the same ones all across this just to give us a reference for those specific colors. There's an infinite number of mixes you can come up with depending on the blues, yellows, and greens that you use. These are just the ones that are the most common in my palette, so that is why I chose to use them. 
If you choose to get these colors, which I will link in the description below, make sure you try mixing them with the other blues, yellows, and greens that you have on your own palette so you know what they are all capable of. Then you can keep these for references when you're doing your paintings to know what they are able to do, what mixes you can get. We're going to start with our Pearl Red and our Ultramarine Blue. We try to mix these as evenly as possible. I'm going to just mix a little bit of each of those three and make sure this one is all pearl red. We'll start off with our ultramarine blue. I did get a lot in there so I can... My goal is to try and get a fairly even mix, which I will say with blue and red can be quite difficult because they're both very powerful colors. So if you get a little too much of one versus the other, you're going to end up either more red or more blue. This looks like a pretty good blend of the two colors here. We've got a nice violet. You can definitely see some red tones in there, even though I had quite a bit of blue, but I also see blue tones. It's quite interesting. In some lights, I almost see more red, but then sometimes I see more blue. Beautiful color, though. Let's add our cad yellow, which we know yellow and red will make a nice orange. And what a lovely orange that is. It's almost a fleshy orange tone, which I do use red and yellow a lot for my flesh tones. So this is wonderful to know that I can really pull those yellow and reds to make a beautiful flesh tone, but also get those mid-tones and then move into my red. I like to stay with the same two colors when doing the flesh so that I don't create mud. I did do a video on flesh tones. If you would like to see that, I will link it below. Now we're going to try our sap green. Now this is the complement, so we know we're going to get more of a brown or a neutral tone. And right off the bat, we got a lovely neutral. Look at that. It's a nice warm brown. I don't think I would push it more green just because I, I mean, unless you wanted a more green or olive brown, which I guess you could do depending on what you want. But this is a lovely brown. Very happy with those colors so far. Now let's move on to our deep scarlet. Let's get a nice batch here, here, and here. I have to be careful going into these that I don't do too much. So we have a nice even tone there. Ooh, how beautiful. Reminds me of some grape juice. Mm -hmm. I do see, I think, some slight granulation in here. And even in this one, as our ultramarine does have some granulation to it. And it's very beautiful because I can see little specks of blue starting to form now that it's dry. They're starting to lift or float in that red. Let's add our cad yellow. It's more vibrant orange. This orange reminds me more of like an actual orange that I would eat. Because our deep scarlet has some natural earthy tones, I can actually feel the earthiness in these two colors. It almost has more of a brown tone to it. What do you guys think? Do you feel like it has a more of a brown tone? Now to move on to our green. You see, I think I have a little too much green and it looks a little bit more olive. So I'm going to add just a touch more of our deep scarlet. I almost went into the wrong color. See what I mean by you get a little too much one way? <laughs> you have to play around. So if it looks a little too red, 
add a little bit more green. If it's looking a little too green, you know, and you're looking for that very neutral color, then just keep kind of going back and forth between the two until you find that neutral color. Don't give up and be like, I can't get it. There we go. There it is. I mean, if you're looking for a more olive green or a more red brown, then that's fine. And that's what you can study as well. You can take these and see if I add more red, what tones will it give me? If I add more greens, what tone will that give me? And that way you can see a whole variety of shades that you can get just from these two colors and do the same with each one of these. Color charts will help you better understand your paints and what you can do with them and how to best use them for your paintings. That way you're using as little mixing as possible so that you get more pure colors and less mud. We're gonna move on to our last group, which is our Mayan orange. I was a little nervous about this one at first because I thought it would be really orange like our Sennelier orange, but it really is more of a red orange. Going in with our ultramarine blue. I would like to go a little darker. Um, I feel like I didn't get enough pigment from my red in there. I'm gonna add more pigment. Hopefully I can get a better understanding of just how deep this can go. Definitely can go nice and deep. And if I added more blue, it would be a really nice deep violet. Let's go in with our yellow. Check out our orange. It's a very happy orange. Now seeing this dry, I would say this feels more like an actual orange color where this one definitely is more of a burnt orange. Interesting how they change once they're dry. It can look one way while it's wet, but it definitely dries differently. Now we have to be careful with compliments because they can turn to mud very quickly if we're not careful. If we use them right, we can use those neutrals to our advantage and get lovely brown tones without necessarily always needing to use a brown. But they can also work beautifully side by side as long as they're not mixing and creating that mud that we don't want. Because as you can see, you know, red and green, as we know, a lot of times we use them as Christmas colors and they look beautiful together. But you mix them together and sometimes you can create a color that you don't necessarily want. So if you're not intending to get this, then it can be quite a disappointing surprise. But if you are aiming for those neutral colors, you can definitely use it to your advantage. I can see the, the Mayan orange peeking through and it almost looks like this sap green has almost a little bit of granulation to it with this Mayan orange. It's beautiful. Now that we've gone through all of our colors and we've seen how beautiful they all are, I'm going to move these aside and bring back the colors from my reds video. So we definitely have our very cool reds. This one I would say is also more of a cool red. And then we have a lot more warm reds. Aren't those beautiful? Every single one of them are beautiful. And I'm grateful for these additions to my palette. I feel like it just broadens my palette and what I will be able to do for my paintings. I've already actually started using these three colors on my palette. I've added them here. Uh, I need to clean that, but as you can see, they are very much well loved. I did start recently using these only within the last like month, 
or so, and I just love them. And actually, uh, this one is the Cad Red Light, and then I have my Pearl Red and my Mayan Orange and Deep Scarlet here, and then I've chose to have my Quinn Red. So I have actually more warm reds in my palette than I do cool reds. And I find myself reaching for the different reds depending on what it is I'm doing. You can see how both of these reds are bright and brilliant. This one almost feels more cool next to this one, but it's definitely not when you compare it with all of these other ones. I would definitely say that is, like they said, a fire engine red. And I love the earthiness of this deep scarlet, which is closer to this Venetian red. And you can see how this is much more orange than our Mayan orange, though all beautiful. So far, I am very happy with all the colors of reds in all their varieties that I have. I will continue to expand my reds through the different ones you guys have all mentioned as I continue to test out more pigments and finding what it is that I really like for my palette or having multiple palettes depending on what it is I'm wanting to paint because I find all of these reds very useful and I do use them all. And if you haven't, I hope you give these ones a try. They are beautiful, vibrant, and bright colors that are a wonderful addition to any palette. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and talking more about reds and would love to hear what you use your reds for on your palette, whether it be for landscapes, portraits, whatever it is you use them for. I would love to hear from you. If you like seeing these kind of videos, consider subscribing to see future videos like this, as well as other tips and tutorials. And to click that bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos like this. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!